Hello everyone and welcome back to more Umi Neko When They Cry. In the last video, Rosa beat the crap out of Maria because she doesn't have any friends. And that's basically the entire episode. <laughs> it was pretty intense. Um, I didn't really like it, but, you know. <laughs> Either way. Anyway, it seems we're back with Kinzo here, who is noticing the sounds of the raindrops beating on the window. It seemed to be pouring down thickly. It had begun to rain later than the weather report had predicted. Kinzo approached the window as if being summoned by the sound of the rain. I don't remember these giant statues being in his study. The sound of rain is a sound of silence. That sound feels quieter than any silence. And makes humans remember that in the end, they are alone from the moment they're born to the moment they die. Oh, we wouldn't be able to have a scene with Kinzo without him talking about Beatrice. Were those words directed at the rainy sky? There was no one to be seen in the direction of Kinzo's gaze. この島は現世より切り離された。もう誰も私の儀式の邪魔をすることはできぬ。Oh, I see. So he's waiting for the tsunami so that nobody can escape the island. Well, this seems like it's going to get pretty intense soon. お前にふさわしい生贄は十分にあるぞ。息子たちが4人。I feel bad for the grandchildren because they haven't done anything themselves really to gain Kinzo's ire. You know, apart from being children. <laughs> Uh, Maria is probably horrendous to look at, according to, to Kinzo. I don't know. But Kinzo, if you become the sacrifice, then there's no way you'll get to see Beatrice smile again. だからこそなのだ。それだけの狂気を Kinzo tore the window open, ripped a golden ring off of his finger, and forcefully threw it away. At that time, the sound of thunder rang out, giving the illusion that the lightning had accepted the ring. そこにいるのは私であるだろう。私が最後まで生き残り、お前の目覚めを見守るだろう。さあ、来たれ、ベアトリーチェ。よ、こそ、あが、うたぎ。私が踏み出したすべてと引き換えに、私にもう一度だけ
still, there was a lot of really interesting things that Kinzo just spoke of that are making me quite excited for the future episodes. A news ticker popped up on top of the TV programme we were watching. The disaster report told how municipalities all over were continually sending out rain, flood and wave warnings. Of course, the raindrops beating harshly on the window were even more convincing. This rain is what's going to stop you from leaving when all of the all of the stuff goes wrong. そりゃあ、ね。ちょっとの天気でも船は結構するもんだしょ。やっぱり日曜日の日に引き上げられないか。念のため、月曜日に外部との<笑><笑> Now, oh, Battle Scott has priorities, right? <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I would have been like, yeah! That sounds incredibly inconvenient. でも毎日きっちり担任から電話がかかってきて、老人集合、何を提出しろと、すっかく資料されることだな。That yeah, see when we used to have snow days back in the good old time when I was at school, you just did whatever you wanted. Nobody forced you to study. じゃあよ。ちなみに行きは天気が良くても帰りは悪くて結構ってなったらどうするんだ。学校に泊まるのか。そういうのはよくあることだぜ。だから人を出来ない人用の宿泊所があってよ。そこに寝泊まりするんだ
and just make her home wherever she wanted. Jessica stretched out and reclined in the sofa. Maybe it was a bad time slot because there weren't any interesting programs on and we had nothing to do but languidly kill time until we were called for dinner. After that episode, Maria never returned to the cousin's room after all. Is she still outside in the rain? Aunt Rosa probably took her back to the mansion. It had to be pretty boring for Maria, all by herself while the adults had a confusing conversation. We thought we might as well head over to the mansion to see her, but the weather really was awful. And since there wasn't much time until dinner, we stayed where we were. At that time, we heard the sound of a humble knock. Jessica answered. It was Kanonkun's voice. Did he go to all the trouble of coming from the mansion in this rain just to get us? Well, how else would they have known that dinner was ready? Couldn't he have just called us on the telephone? Oh yeah, I, I guess. I guess. Maybe I'm just being dumb. Well, I guess servants at work don't always get to take the most efficient route. George and Iki turned off the television and stood up. He sounded like a cow just then. As we left the room, Canon Kun bowed slightly, bowed silently and respectfully. He doesn't look wet. After seeing the three of us out, Canon Kun peered into the empty room. I called it, she's totally still outside looking for the rose in the pouring rain. Wow, Rosa. <laughs> Way to neglect your child. Rosa was lying on a sofa in the empty parlour, having fallen asleep before she knew it. She was bearing a burden that the children couldn't even imagine. That's why she only needed to let her guard down a little before the weariness immediately dragged her into the world of sleep. Realising this, Genji brought a blanket over to her. When he tried to spread it over her, her eyes snapped open, as though she'd been shocked with electricity. <sighs> when she realised that the thing that had touched her was just a blanket, and that Genji had been considerately giving it to her, she let out a sigh of relief. <laughs> When he was asked for the time, Genji checked a pocket watch that he took out of his chest pocket. Rosa gave her head a little shake when she realised that not much time had actually passed even though it had felt like she'd slept for ages. Even though she didn't feel rested at all, the drowsiness that had enveloped her must have been pretty deep. Thank 
Rosa finally realised that the peaceful sound that had put her to sleep was actually the rain. Yes, and your child is probably still standing outside. You should go get her immediately. From the window, what she could see of the rose garden was completely blurred by the wind and the rain. So she finally actually thinks about her daughter for once. Rosa knew her daughter's nature well, so a chill ran down her spine. Maria was stubbornly honest, and if she was ordered to find something that didn't, didn't exist, she would look forever and ever, even in pouring rain. Yeah, go be a good mom. Even though she'd known about Maria's simple honesty better than anyone, she'd once again lost control of her emotions and done something terrible. Rosa pushed Genji away and ran down the hall. The outside really looked like a typhoon, and the rain was pouring down spectacularly. Maybe because of some aspect of the Terran, the winds weren't typhoon class, so an umbrella wouldn't be torn out of one's hands. Even so, it certainly was a windy rain. There was no time to admire the roses being drenched, とりあえずI just wonder why everyone's sitting around chatting and not actually, you know, going to look for her and check she's okay. We hadn't worried much thinking that Aunt Rosa had taken her back to the mansion. However, when Kanonkun had come from the mansion to call us and thought Maria was here, we got a little worried. <laughs> If he had cut through the rose garden, taking the shortest line between the mansion and the guest house, then he would have just barely missed the place where Maria had been looking for her rose. And it was raining this hard too. It certainly would have been possible for Kenlonkun to fail to notice her. Yeah, see, at least Battle has got, like, the go-for-it business going on. George and Iki and I flew out into the rain. Jessica and Kanonkun followed us. When George and Iki called back, Aunt Rosa jumped at him and grabbed onto him. It's not like George did something to her, there's no need to... Make that face. <laughs> C 
six years ago, Maria was three years old. She was a cute and pure kid who'd just accept whatever anyone said. But six years have passed since then. She's nine now and experiencing the ups and downs of life should have taught her something. But Maria, are you telling me you're still as innocent and pure as you used to be? As I circled the rose bed, something white unexpectedly turned to face me. It was a white umbrella. Maria was crouching down, holding a white umbrella, and still searching for that rose. Her face, which had turned bright red from her crying her eyes out, was dirtied with water and mud. It was a truly pitiful sight. Maria had probably been here since the rain started pouring down. Her shoulders were freezing. She looked tired to the bone, but fortunately since she was holding an umbrella, she wasn't completely soaked. The umbrella probably came from the handbag Maria always carried around. Thank goodness. Seriously, thank goodness. Aunt Rosa threw her umbrella aside and hugged Maria. I'm sorry if I accidentally skipped some of the dialogue by the way, but it's really hard to hear the voice acting over the rain. Which, you know, I suppose that's how it would really be if it was raining that hard, but I just can't really hear what's going on. It looked like Maria still wasn't able to accept it but she no longer had enough energy left to resist. Jessica and Canon Kun caught up with us. Damn right, Rosa. We couldn't stay in the rain forever. We took Maria with us as we headed back to the mansion. Maria apparently wasn't as worn out as I'd thought. When she remembered we were having calf's sake for dinner, she started chanting, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, ooh, ooh, and returned to her usual spirited self. Aunt Rosa didn't chide Maria for saying ooh, ooh. Okay, that's weird. Some caring person must have brought her an umbrella, but apparently not caring enough to say, why don't you stop looking for a rose in the pouring rain? 
A normal kid would look for shelter once it started raining, but Maria was too stubborn to give up so easily. So maybe that caring person gave up on telling Maria to find shelter, then decided to at least give her an umbrella. Oh, I don't think Rose is going to take too kindly to that. The name Maria cheerfully mentioned was that of the island's witch. Rosa took a deep breath and asked again, trying to do so in a way that wouldn't damage Maria's good mood. Well, I don't think she's going to take too kindly to that. Maria immediately realised that her mother didn't believe her and started crying out unhappily again. So Rosa stopped pursuing the subject. It would probably be faster to ask who lent Maria the umbrella during dinner rather than ask Maria herself. Okay guys, well I'm going to end the episode there. So it seems that if we believe Maria, Beatrice has already made an appearance, which is pretty exciting in my opinion, so maybe she will attend the banquet, who knows? I'm a bit confused because obviously in the epitaph she shouldn't have been revived yet, but we'll see, I suppose. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more, and until next time guys, goodbye!